worship together this morning. Excuse me for a minute, but I've got a song to sing. It might not be on key, but it's from my heart. No one else can tell it, what the Lord has done for me. This might take all day, so I better start right now. And it might get loud. Come on. It might get loud. Heaven's coming down, down.
and God, we just breathe all of you in. Thank you, Jesus. I breathe in the presence of
We, are, we serve a God that Jesus came, he died, he died on the cross, but he was resurrected. We are the only religion that actually has a living, breathing being that we can go to and talk to him and he can talk back. We're the only ones who actually have a living creature who is, who is involved in our lives day in and day out. Our God is not dead. He is a living God. And because He is a living God, we can believe for things that those other people cannot believe in. When we believe in a living God, we can believe for things that are going to be great for our lives. We can believe for healing. We can believe for children to be brought back. We can believe for addictions to be broken. We can believe for marriages to be put back together. We can believe for all of these things only because we have a living God. So I want you to think about it. I want you to think about that one thing that you got this morning. Everybody's got one. Everybody's got something. And I don't want you to think small either. I want you to think really big. What is that really big, huge thing that you are believing for from God? And let me just tell you, because you, are, because you want to believe for it, He can do it. He is a living God, and He can step into your situation. He doesn't have to just be held back because He's not here. He is here, and He wants you to believe for something big this morning. So we're, I'm going to encourage you. We're going to do one more song. It's going to be awesome. But I want you to think about the one thing that you're going to go all in for this morning. You're worshiping a God who is literally in this room. And he is here for you to believe for something huge. So I want you to believe for it. I want you to worship him big this morning. I want you to give it all you've got this morning while we do this last song. And I want you to believe for that one thing that you thought you couldn't let go of when you walked in here this morning. It can be done in Jesus' name.
you are going to do miraculous things in our lives this week. We believe, God, that you are going to do awesome things in our lives, in our church, in this service, and in the rest of our week, God. We're just going to believe for those big things this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, South Point. How are y'all this morning? Good, good, good. We're so glad to see you guys here. Well, I want to tell you about a couple of things. We've only got a couple of things going on right now. If those of you um, who know my family, we have a graduating senior this year. This is our last one. Yeah. And I'm not the only one. There are some other graduates that are going to be recognized next Sunday. So if you have somebody in your family, if you have a son or a daughter who's graduating high school or college, we actually have some people that are graduating from nursing school and being doctors and all kinds of things this year. So if you have somebody that you want to be recognized, they're going to be here next week. We'd love to bring them up and just give them a gift. So make sure that you go online. You can either use the QR code that's going to be on the screen or, or you can um, go out to the information desk and they can help you do that because we want to recognize all of those guys who are making an awesome, awesome transition into the next part of their lives. And we want to pray over them for them to be able to do that in God's grace and God's mercy. Also, if you have a student who's not already signed up for summer camps, we have them from 6th grade to 12th grade. We have two different ones. Or if you want to be able to give towards somebody who's not been able to pay for their trip, if they need a little financial help, there's a, there's a big sign on the other side of the lobby over there. If y'all just want to stop by there, shoot a picture of that QR code and be able to take care of that. So we're going to take 42 seconds. We're going to move some stuff around up here. Get ready for Craig to come and talk to us. And we're going to have an awesome day. How many of you are ready? Are you ready? Okay, yeah. So I want you to turn around to somebody. I want you to say good morning. Maybe somebody that you didn't come in here with. Maybe somebody who doesn't look like you. Get out of You may have to get out of your seat to do that. So say good morning. We'll be right back on your mark. Get set. Go. Welcome to South Point Online. Hi, I'm Mac, one of your online pastors. Welcome to South Point Online. We're so glad you're joining us this morning. Hi, I'm Vina, and I'm one of the online pastors here at South Point. Welcome to South Point Online. I'm Justin. Thank you for joining us at South Point Online. We want to connect with you. So make sure to say hi in the chat. If this is your first time joining us, hit the connect button on our app or click the link in the chat. Here at South Point, we are bashing the generous. Click the link below to give or click the give button on our app. We have many online pastors who would love to pray for you. You can chat with them by using our prayer tab on our app. <laughs> to follow along with the message, download the notes by clicking the notes button at southpoint.tv notes. Now, let's enjoy a great message. Y'all good, huh? All right, let's just get a little temperature in the room real quick. How's this section doing? You good? That was pretty good. You guys are normally the pro troublemakers, so that was not bad, not bad. How are y'all doing right here, right here in the middle? Yeah. All right, come on. What's up? What's up, left side? You're still the troublemakers. I, you know, you see, you're off to a good start there, off to a good start. Hey, listen, if it's your first time here today, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Craig, and my wife, Patty, she was up here a minute ago. We get to pastor this church together, and it's just so much fun. And really, I'm 
We're honored that you even come and are a part of this and listen and learn and grow. Thanks for letting us be your pastors. I, I, I really mean that. Um, even those people, those yahoos, they're like traveling and stuff, but let's say hi to them anyway. Hey, there's a bunch of people watching online. Will you put your hands together and help me welcome the rest of our family? Man, we're glad you guys are here. YouTube, Facebook, church online platform. Woohoo, way to go, way to go. Now, right off the bat, how many of you remember when June 3rd is? No, nobody? June 3rd? June 3rd, just to get us all up to speed. June 3rd is the day right after June 2nd. It's two, this is crazy, this is crazy, check this out. It's two days after June 1st. Did you know this stuff? I, it's crazy, it's crazy. But now that you know where June 3rd is, hey men, we're doing a conversations, a men's conversation gathering on June 3rd, which is the day after June 2nd, because we established that. Okay, and uh, so sign up, pull out your phone app, sign up for that, and uh, just come be a part. It's, we have a great time talking, hanging out, eating some food and stuff like that. It's all, it's all good. Now, I'm getting ready to tell you a little story, paint a little picture, and only 95% of you are going to know, I mean, only 5% of you are going to know what I'm talking about. 95% of you are too young for this story. So I need to paint a little picture for you, because back in the 70s, we as a family got our first, yay, verily, color TV. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. And just so you know, like kids nowadays, let me just say, if you're in that 95% that have no idea what I'm talking about, um, they'll say things like, there's just nothing on to watch. I grew up in a day when we said there's nothing on to watch, literally, there was nothing on the TV. Like they shut the channels off at midnight. Did anybody remember this? I, they're just like, done. Like you watching something, it's just done, gone. And we only had, there was no streaming device. This was pre DVD, pre VCR, pre VCR, pre streaming. This is before Al Gore invented the internet, all the way back then. And, and we only had, count them, one, two, Three channels. Some of you are aware. And there wasn't no. Let me just let. <laughs> let's be clear about this. Them three channels were not 4K. They wasn't 3K. There was no K in it. It was just like. It, and it didn't come from a cable. It came from. Anybody remember these things? Rabbit ear antennas. We're not talking about rabbits today. But rabbit ear antenna. And I was the youngest one in the home. And so my job was to adjust the, I mean, that was just, it's just like, that's how it was, the younger you were. And so my dad would sit there, and for those of you who don't know, there's these metal things that would come off the back of the TV, and you'd move them around to find the airwave to catch this channel or whatever. And my dad would sit there and he'd be like, nope, a little to the left, nope, nope, left, 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 oh, hold it right here. No, no, back to the right, back to the right, back. No, no, and then he would get frustrated and say, go to the kitchen and get me some Oh, tin foil, aluminum foil, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys know this stuff is awesome. Okay, okay. So I was a young boy, so I'd do the aluminum foil on the rabbit ear antennas, pick up the channel, and we would watch this show that changed my life. The show was called Mutual of Omaha Presents Wild Kingdom with your host, Marlon Perkins. Yes. Back then, they used to name people Marlin. Anyway, but this show, I know most of you don't watch the show. It's just not on, but it, it, back then, it was this animal show. Nowadays, there's like a bazillion shows like this, but back then, with only three channels, this was a big time, and I loved it. I remember sitting there with my dad, and we would just watch these animals, because it was like, you know, Animal Kingdom, and I mean, I went to the zoo. I liked the zoo. I liked the animals, but those animals in the zoo, they're, they're not tame, but let's be honest, they're a little domesticated. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're stuck in that cage. Their freedom's been stripped. But watching Mutual of Omaha Prison, I got to see lions hunt down, track down a zebra, and rip its throat out. I was like, yes. I was, yes. And then to help my virginity stay intact, my dad made me watch Wilderbeast Mate. And so that fixed everything, right? There was no problems after that. But watching all these, that was funnier than you think it was. <laughs> Some of you don't know whether to laugh at that joke or not. You're like, I don't know. This is shirt. Um, he said, for, okay, anyway. So we would watch these shows, and I would learn so much about animals. I really did. 
And animals are one of those universal things. Like, it doesn't matter what country you're in, we're aware of, like, we all have different animals for our countries, right? But even though we might not have giraffes here, we're aware of giraffes. Animals are a beautiful, universal illustration that helps us understand a little bit more about us. And I think God did it that way on purpose. If they say, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, then I think a living animal is probably worth about two million words. You know, just the things that you can learn from them about us. And you might say, well, Craig, that's kind of cheesy. That's kind of cheesy. Okay, well then, um, um, that's what Jesus did. Jesus compared and, and put attributes of animals on people all the time. He t- called people he talked about animals like foxes and serpents and doves and goats and sheep and oh so much more. You know, no lions and tigers and bears. But nonetheless, all these different animals, and he was always teaching different attributes of them. And so that's what we're going to do this series. We're going to look at different animals, four different animals today. is the buffalo, next week is the bear, and then we'll talk about the eagle, and then we'll talk about an ant. And they're all in scripture. And to help you with the, the theme or whatever, we got little fun stickers just for kicks and giggles. You, know, you don't have to have one, but they're kind of cool. And you can get one every week, the different animal, and stick them on your water bottle. Everybody's got a water bottle nowadays, right? You just, no, just me. I cover my water bottle stickers. I'm silly like that. Okay. You know, everybody needs like a gold star. It just makes me feel good. Even if I'm giving it to myself. Good job, Craig. Okay. So I'm reading my Bible, doing my devotions a few months ago, and I came across the scripture and I've read it before, but it never really resonated with me like this. No, Psalm 92 says this, but you've made me strong as a charging bison. Now, let me just say this. God made you. Put your name in there instead of me. God made Craig strong as a charging bison. Or if you know bison, buffalo, we're going to use those kind of together today. Same thing. Um, I, I know you can talk to me later about how the, no, only America has bison and the buffalo over there, and they're just distant cousins, and blah, 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 blah. Today, we're just going to buffalo and bison. Buffalo are kind of, in our country, they've really been attached to the American Indian, right? The Native American Indian, because they're from the plains and all that, and that's cool. But buffalo have just become an American icon animal of just about freedom, right? We they even had that song, Come on. Oh, give me a home where the get shot because they go through Mississippi. All right, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, so buffaloes and everything. I mean, we've got you've got the buffalo nickel, the buffalo nickel. You got buffalo soldiers. You got uh, buffalo bills. You've got buffalo wild wings. I mean, buffaloes everywhere. <laughs> Buffalo is good. Buffalo are amazing creatures. Get this. Buffalo can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. Just to put that in perspective, the average horse weighs about 1,000. Okay? Check this out. Buffalo can run at a charge of 35 miles an hour. You say, well, how fast is that? We all, and these are, all diff, these are all averages, but like the human, they say, runs about 8 miles an hour. You know, give or take, whatever, if you're really good at it. Um, eight miles an hour, and, and then you have a horse that runs. You would say, oh, that's got to be fun. Horse runs about 30 miles an hour. A buffalo weighs twice as much as a horse and can run faster than it. That's crazy cool. And they also have this eyesight. Okay, so you've all seen buffalo walk like that. You know, they do that head wag. Nobody? You should really tune into Mutual of Omaha Presents. It's just, it's cool. Um, but they walk and they kind of wag their head. The reason they're doing that, it's not because they're, they're dizzy or drunk. They're not drunk. Um, they, they have eyes on the side of their head. So when they're walking and they do this, they're looking all around them. A buffalo can see almost 360 degrees around them. That's cool, right? They can run fast. They can swim. They can jump fences and all kinds of stuff. And here's one of the cool things about buffalo. Buffalo, they sense a storm is coming. And check this out. When they sense a storm is coming, they're the one animal that turns towards the storm and runs into it. Because they know that if they run into it, they will spend less time in the storm than any other animal. Now, their cousin, their cousin, their cousin, right, is the domestic cow, the domesticated cow, and the cows do the exact opposite. The cows will send, see a sense of storm coming, and they tur- herd up together. I said tur and herd, like turd, but I didn't mean that, so just erase that. They herd up together, and they turn away from the storm and try to outrun it. Now, how many have ever seen a cow run? <laughs> Anybody? Maybe like 
two people, the reason the rest of you haven't seen a cow run, because they don't do it very often. And when they do do it, they ain't fast. And that storm every single time will catch up with them and overtake them. But now that cow, because it chose to herd and run, spends more time in the storm than even an animal that would stand still. It's like the exact opposite approach. Isn't that fascinating? I think that's, I think that's crazy. And I think, I think this verse that we just read, you know, God, make me like a charging bison, is saying, hey, sweetheart, don't be a cow. <laughs> Some of you can encourage your spouse this week with those words. Just look at him and say, stop being a cow. Or heifer, you can say that, stop being, no, don't. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But this verse is saying, hey listen, be, be a charging bison. It's, it's, there's nowhere in the Bible where it says, hey, be like a cow or God made me like a cow. That would be utterly ridiculous. It means, dad jokes, I'm telling you, dad jokes all day long. All right, all day. Okay, so, <laughs> I always say, if nobody else is gonna have fun, I just choose to have a good time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the Bible is saying, this is saying, hey, don't be a cow. Come on, stop being so domesticated and tame. Stop just going with the herd. Every time a storm comes along, every time something happens, why is it we always seem to just turn and try to get away from the storm as fast as possible when we were designed to do the exact opposite? Why is it we always choose to go with everybody else in the culture that we're in rather than recognizing that God's done something different in us? Hey, don't be a cow. The world has enough cows. You, you tracking with me? And look, First Peter, Peter says this in First Peter. He says, you are not a cow. Okay, I kind of changed it a little bit, but he said, you are not like that. You are a chosen people. The KJV right there, King James Version says, you are a peculiar people. You're supposed to be strange. We get Jesus in us, and then we do everything we can. We love the salvation and the forgiveness, but then we try to mold our Christian walk in with our current culture and be like everybody else. And I think God was really annoyed with that because he saved us and forgave us of sins to be a peculiar, weird people that sometimes, many times, go the opposite direction of everybody else. You say, well, I never faced any storms. That's because you're always in the herd that's running in the same direction as the enemy. Okay. So you go through storms. We all go through storms, by the way. Just Presbyterian amen. Guys, Presbyterians don't say anything. They just nod. That's a Presbyterian amen is just this. If I wanted a Pentecostal amen, I'd say, give me a Pentecostal amen. And then that says, oh, yeah, it's okay. We got a Pentecostal now. Um, there's a difference. Y'all got to learn this stuff. Anyway, anyway, you know, we go through storms. And I think a lot of times we turn with the herd and we end up going with everybody else. And we look to them for solutions to get through the storm we're in. And we realize that we've been domesticated by a culture that does not care about us and does not know the direction through the storm. But we keep turning to it. We all face storms. Let me just tell you a few storms real quick that we all face one way or the other. Some of it will have to do with age. Some of it will not. But the first one is this, relationships. Relationships. We talk about relationships all the time around here, and the reason for that is because I know that relationships will either make you or break you. It just will. And, and if you are newly saved, if you have newly, newly come into this relationship with Jesus Christ, um, let, me, let me say, and we have a lot of those. That's fabulous. And, you know, we did water baptism a few weeks ago, and that was ridiculously cool and awesome. Um, but if you're new to this whole thing of following Jesus Christ, can, let me just give you a little suggestion. You might want to weed your friend garden. There might be some friends that you're still around and you don't understand why you're not changing and stuff. Listen, the best way to overcome the bad habits and behaviors that you have is to stop hanging constantly around the people that endorse the bad habits and behaviors that you have. But I like them, they're so much fun. And that fun will take you all the way to 201 Poplar. Come on, somebody, you know what I'm saying? 
Look at this verse, Proverbs 7, 27, 17. Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. Listen, if a relationship is not helping you, if it's not making you better, if it's not molding you and shaping you to be more like Christ, just consider that you might want to address that. And that means when you're in a relationship storm and things are doing this, don't be so stinking passive aggressive. Yeah, you, come on. I, I, we're just, we just go along with their, well, I just don't want to ruffle their feathers. I just don't. Buffalo don't ruffle feathers. Buffalo stomp over people. They're just saying, okay, don't do that. But turn and face the problem. That might be an uncomfortable conversation, but can I tell you something? One uncomfortable conversation can change everything for the better. We try to passively aggressive change stuff, and that's just... Has anybody ever put the word passive to a buffalo? Nay, barely not once ever. More death occur in Yellowstone National Park from buffalo than almost any other animal. Did you know that? And it's from stupid people who think they're passive because they're just standing there. I'm going to get me a picture. Hey, Margaret, let's get a selfie with this buffalo. And that bro, it, you know, just snaps like that and just, just they are not passive aggressive. Cows are. So if you don't like the environment of your work situation, if you don't like the environment of your friend group, it could very well be that you have been passively, aggressively feeding into the gossip and the spirit of discord that's in that. And then you don't understand why you're no longer enjoying your friend group, why you're no longer enjoying work. It's because you've been feeding into the very thing that it is. How about you just turn around and face the storm and what, whoever the person is that's causing a problem, talk to them. Have a, well, I Snapchatted them, put your phone down, go have coffee with somebody and say, listen, you're a turd and we need to work through this. <laughs> this is better preaching than you think it is, whether you like it or not. All right, let's just move on to the next one. Health. Here's another storm that a lot of people go through is health. And the health thing, it'll hit you sometimes. It might be genetics. It might be like an accident or something like that. It, you know, there's all different kinds of ways that our health can be affected. But when something goes wrong with your health, turn and face the storm and make some steps to be more healthy. Now, I say that, yes, I recognize that I'm standing in Mississippi. I do. And I'm not saying, all right, South Point, here's what we're going to do. We're going to fast everything that tastes good and just eat grass the rest of our lives. Nope, not interested. I, I'm, just, I'm not saying that, but here's what I am saying. I'm saying this is the only physical body you will ever have. And sometimes we purposely do things that we know are not good for our bodies and we could stop, but we do it anyway. It's called being American. Come on, come on. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> oh, hold on. Okay, when I got to the South, here's something. When I got to the South, I did not know there was this mentality. Like I lived in Michigan, Florida, some different place. And I never heard this concept, but I learned this in the South. There's people right here that use this Bible verse that we're getting ready to read, and they will Bible thump it. You know what Bible thump it is? You just take a verse and just beat people over the head with it. And they take this verse, and I've heard it. I got here, and I've heard this preached. I've heard people talk about it, and I just laugh. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know? Because that's the, I'm Bible thumping. You track it with me? You just track it with Presbyterian? Amen. Still with the talking. Okay. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Hmm. Oh, who's in you whom ha, you've received from God? Ha, can I get a witness in the house? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Mm -hmm. It's a temple of the Holy Ghost. Ha. And they hold that verse up and they say, that's why you can't get tattoos or piercings or color your hair or anything like that because that's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. However, these same people will take that same verse and not feel bad at all about pulling up a chair and pulling an all-nighter at the Chinese buffet. 
just spend days with their face in a plate of Kung Pao chicken. <laughs> just waiting for the owner to come out and say, you'll be here four days, no more food for you. And you had your belly button pierced, so now it's like a trailer hitch, and they just hook you up and just drag you out. <sighs> Send your hate mail to that was funny. I don't care who you are at southpoint.tv. Okay, um, whatever your health issue is, we all have them at different levels, right? All I'm saying is, come on, it's your only physical body. Just do some things that are in the right direction. Just turn and face the storm that you're facing and charge through it. Do what you can. If that's seeing a doctor, whatever, whatever it is, do what you know to do right. You, you track with me? Here's the third one. I know you didn't like the health one. You'll love this one. Um, the third storm we face is money. Money. We all go through money storms in life. There's a dude named Roy Vaden, and he, he wrote this book called Taking the Stairs. And in there, he, he, he introduces us to this thing called the pain paradox. And it's in your notes. This, I, this is just really cool. Um, the pain paradox, it says this, short-term easy leads to long-term difficult, while short-term difficult leads to long-term easy. Now, let me say that again, because this, this will, we always want the quick fix, right? Hey, what's a secret? What's this? What's that? Uh, you can do little tricks and quick little things, but can I tell you something? It's just going to cause you more pain down the road. If you do it right, you ever heard this? Do, if it's worth doing, do it right the first time. That, that's really what we're talking about here. Short-term easy leads to long-term difficult, while short-term difficult leads to long-term easy. I see this all the time, especially when it comes to money and tithing in the church. And I say tithing, and some people freak out, and they're like, oh my God, he's got, just real quick and easy, listen. Tithing simply means 10% of your income. It means bringing 10% in. 10% is the first. The fir we don't give God our leftovers, whatever's left. We give him our first. We give him our first and our best, and we trust him with all the rest. It rhymes. It's easy to remember. Why do we do that? Because God did it first. He gave us his first son, his only son, and his best son, and didn't know how many people would respond to him, but he gave it anyway. And so we come and we give our 10% to him. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. And we trust him with the 10% because we're trusting him with the 90%. The reason we struggle trusting him with the 10% is because we don't really trust God with the 90%. And we don't trust God with the 90% because we're struggling managing the 100%. And so we say, well, God, I don't see how I can do 10%. I just, I'm barely getting by on 100%. How will that work? It's called trust. He said, do this, and so it's trust. I will do it. Well, that's going to cause a storm. Yeah, there's going to, there will be a little bit of pain when you start it. It's called a pain paradox. But if you can charge into that storm and endure that, can I tell you something? It is so much easier and better down the road when you've established a different budget and you've started giving God the first and the best. Now God is taking care of your 90 and it'll be like nobody's business to give even more. It's just a beautiful cycle, but it's trusting him with our money. Okay, Here, here's the fourth one. Here's the fourth storm. And uh, I think, we, I think I'll, we go through this all the time. Um, spiritual. We go through spiritual storms. And I actually think this is a storm that I know keeps coming up in my life regularly, and I have to keep just pushing it away and charging into it and doing what I need to do to get over it. Um, it's this idea that you come into the church and you meet Jesus and you, you start doing these Christian disciplines, but you're not seeing the Christian blessings that you think you should get because you're doing the Christian disciplines. D does that make sense? In other words... I'm starting to behave in a better way, and since I'm starting to behave in a better way, God should be giving me a gold star for this. So where are those blessings? And since I'm not seeing those Christian blessings that I feel like, that I feel like I should be getting, then I must not be doing it right, or it's not working, and so we just quit, and we end up having this thing called a crisis of faith. When I was in my third year of Bible college, I was really smart in my own little world. And, you know, theology and Greek and, oh, just all this stuff, all this study. 
And I actually had the mentality that if I did the right Christian disciplines, I would receive the proper Christian blessings. So much so, um, I, have, I had a girlfriend at the time, and thankfully, this story works because that girlfriend turned into my wife, so that's cool, right? Um, anywho, um, so... She lived in Huntsville, Alabama. I lived in Cleveland, Tennessee at college, and I would drive every weekend to see my girl. You know what I mean? It's just, you just, every week, class would get out, and I was gone. Now, that much driving, you need to understand something. It has been, there's a rumor out there that my national driving record might not be the best. (laughs) A rumor's been told that... I can neither confirm nor deny, even though it's 100% accurate, that my license was even revoked one time for so many speeding tickets. <laughs> I paid more, true story, I paid more in speeding tickets in one week than I made that entire month. So I'm driving to my girlfriend's house, and I'm not completely redeemed of this problem. Let's be honest. I still ain't redeemed of speed. And anybody else, I just, that's why I love it when officers come to church. I'm like, yes, you can come. Can I have your cell phone number so when I get called, pulled over? Um, but I'm driving, and I even had this thought. I thought, you know what? I'm going to play some Christian music. That way I won't get pulled over. <laughs> no kidding. And so I'm in the car, put a cassette tape in of some Christian music that I didn't really like, but I endured it because let's be honest, it's a Christian discipline. And so I'm driving, listening, and I get pulled over, whoop, whoop, and I'm like, what the, are you not listening to what I'm listening to? And the cop comes up, license and registration, you know, you do all that whole thing, and he goes back to the car, and this is the moment where every one of you, if you've been pulled over, you start praying, don't you? What's he coming back with? Is it a ticket or a warning? You're all praying for a warning. And I earned a warning because I was listening to Christian music. And I said, Lord, Lord, you know. You know my heart, my motives. You know I was listening to Christian music, whatever. I know I'm not getting to tell you. That joker, Yahoo with the badge, came up there and had the nerve to give me a ticket for my behavior. What? I said, you're giving me a ticket? He was like, yeah. I said, do you not hear the music? He did not. Did you know he did not care? I got a ticket. So what did I do after that? I was like, if you ain't listening, then that's fine. So I put in some ACDC and enjoyed the rest of my trip. (laughs) That's a very 100% true story and very silly, but we all do it. We think, God, why did I get in a car wreck when I did my devotions that morning? Why do I have a terminal illness when I go to church every Sunday? Why am I having to go through a divorce when I was faithful? Why is my behavior not lining up with what's going on around me? Here's the deal. Living the life of Christ and following Christ does not insulate you or me from the storms of life. They form us to endure them. And there is a big difference. You are a follower of Jesus Christ, and if you're going to follow Jesus Christ, it is always head first into the storm. Don't you turn your tail and run. That's not the direction my Savior's going. You were made for this. You can sit there and whine and cry about the storm you're in, but can I tell you something? Everybody in this room and watching online is going through a storm right now of some kind or shape. And if you're currently not... Welcome to that small little sliver, because one's coming tomorrow. You're not alone. Stop whining and complaining, but how about you stop acting like a cow, turn your butt around, and charge straight into that storm, because you were made for this. You were made for this. When a storm comes at you, sometimes you just need, and I, you know, you, get, you can get the stickers out there. They're just for kicks and giggles, little stickers for each animal that we're going to do this during this series. Man, look at that sticker, and you just say, yeah. Speak to that storm. I'm not scared of you. I'm coming straight for you, baby, because I was made for this. I was made for this. So how do you thrive in a storm? Look, real quick, and these really are quick. I know. It always comes down to it, and you got to be like, he's got so many verses and so many more things to say. Real quick, how do you thrive in the storm? It's not just charging into it. It's thriving while you're in it. Here's the first one. Face it. Don't run from it. The cows run in fear. The buffalo turn and run fearlessly into the storm. 
In the Bible, and you guys know this, this is like old school stuff, but in the Bible, it says fear not 365 times. Why does it do that? It says that, I just believe, it says that because there is a fear not for every single day of your life. Every day you put your feet on the floor and you, you, the storm hits you immediately. Because come on, it's the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning. Just me? No, okay, just me. Wake up in the morning and that storm is the first thing in my mind. And the Holy Spirit whispers every morning, fear not. I got you. You were made for this. I formed you for this. Look at some of these verses. I won't read all 365. I don't have time. Joshua 1, 9 says, I have, not, have I not commanded you? Come on. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Isaiah 41, 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of a cow. That's an encouraging word. Again, all week long, look at your spouse, look at your friends. Stop being a heifer, bro. Right? Just, just, okay, don't say that. But don't be a cow. He hasn't given us a spirit of cow. What's he given us? He's given us a spirit of power. 2,000 pounds charging forward at 35 miles an hour, ready, designed, willing, and able to take on any storm in front of it. Here's the second one. You are free, so live free. You are free, so live free. Galatians 5.13 says this, for you have been called to live in freedom. And as Christians, we always relate this to our for, uh, the forgiveness of sins, right? I'm free because God has forgiven me and he set me free from sin. And that, that's very true, that's very true. But there's another side to that that we don't talk about very much. And if you'll listen to this one point, if you haven't heard anything else, if you're sleeping, wake your neighbor up right here. I mean, not that I see anybody sleeping, but if you're sleeping, wake your neighbor up because this one thing will change the rest of your life. God has set us free, not just from sin. He set us free to no longer have to please people. People pleasing, when you're in that herd mentality and you're going into a storm looking for direction and advice, what you're trying to do is keep everybody happy around you at how you go through that storm. And that is not biblical. Look at this verse. You say, show it to me in the Bible. Okay, I'm so glad you asked. First Thessalonians 2, 4 says this. Our purpose is to please who? Who were we not designed to please? People. Our purpose is to please God, not people. Not people. We go through our storms, and even sometimes you even go through a storm and you're trying to please your spouse while you're trying to go through this storm. Can I tell you something? Sometimes you might need to look at your spouse and say, listen, sweetheart, I love you. I really do. I'm going through something right now, and I don't need you trying to corral me. I just need a little bit of grace. It goes back to that conversation, having a real, real conversation. Don't be scared to do that. I mean, think about it. We try to please everybody. If Jesus pleased everybody, he would have never been crucified. So why are we constantly trying to do something that Jesus never tried to do himself? Third one, how we doing? Here's the third way you thrive in a storm. Trust in your design and in the designer. The buffalo has been designed for the very storms it goes through. I have a picture on my phone, on my computer, of a buffalo that was taken in uh, Yellowstone National Park. And the documentation of the picture and all that, it was taken of a buffalo walking through a snowstorm. It was 41 degrees below zero. And this buffalo is just walking like, is this all you got? I was made for this. I was made for this. Let me tell you something. At the risk of sounding redundant, you were made for what you're going through. And you got this. There's a Christian philosopher. I'll share this and then we'll, we'll close out. There's a Christian philosopher named Henry Nouwen. And he was, he wrote this in one of his books. He went to like a carnival or a fair or whatever. And there was these trapeze artists. And he just got fascinated with this trapeze artist. The husband and wife, I think they were, but as a man and a woman. 
and she's flipping, flying through the air. You know, you've seen him and catch and thrown and all this stuff. And he got fascinated. He kept going back to the show. He went several times. And then he finally got the opportunity to meet this couple. And he went backstage or whatever. And he was like, I am just so impressed with how you, he's talking to the lady, how you are just able to just let go and fly through the air like that. That is just, it is spectacular to watch. You have so much skills and talent. And she said this to him. She said, I'm not the one with the skills and the talent. The man who catches me is the man with the skills and the talent. All I do is fly and flip through the air, and all I got to do is get close. And I trust that he'll catch me, and he always catches me. Can I tell you something? Just get close. You don't have to be perfect. And no, you don't have the skills. You don't, I don't either. But we serve somebody that says, I will never drop you. You will never fall. You, all you got to do is get close. And some of you might say, Pastor Craig, I'm not even close. I'm the furthest thing away. That's okay. Because we have a thing called a safety net. And it's called grace. And even if you go the opposite direction, his grace will still catch you. He will never let you fall. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. It is guaranteed. That's the power of Christ. So if you have that much guarantee, if you can never lose, why would you not head into the storm? Why? Why would you constantly keep trying to please people rather than turning, charging into the storm, and following him where he leads? After all, you were made for this. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes with me for a second? Let me just pray for you. Heavenly Father, I love you so much. Father, I thank you for this moment. I tell you what, God, I thank you so much for the way you've designed us internally. You, we poorly, so poorly, we underestimate how you have made us so many times, and we freak out about all of our faults, and we forget to praise you for what you have put in us and how you've designed us. So you're here this morning, and I, there's some of you, I want you to get that storm in mind. Some of you are going through a storm right now, and it's... it's it's a gale. It's gale force winds, and you're, you're, man, being buffeted every step, step of the way. Heavenly Father, I ask that you encourage them today, that you strengthen them, that you let them dig deep this morning. Holy Spirit, dig deep. Let them find that, that buffalo mentality to charge forward because you said you would never, ever tempt them beyond what they could bear and that you would guide them and lead them, and no matter what, that you would turn all things, all things, and make it good if we would just trust you. We love you, Father, and I thank you for your word and your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for uh, hanging out with me today. And listen, here, let me just encourage you on one little thing today. Um, some of you really have a storm in your life that you're really struggling with. And I, let me just, as an encouragement, as a charging step forward, just come down here. There's people down here, down front to pray with you if you want prayer. But if you don't want prayer, that's fine. But come down here and write that storm on a piece of paper and stick it to the cross. Just as, just as a symbolic act to say, you know what? Boom. I'm headed straight into this thing and I was made for this. And then you got your little sticker on your water bottle or whatever just to remind you. It says run into the storm. Come on, we got this. Why do we got this? Because Jesus lives in us and he's greater than anything in this world. All right. Will you stand with me, if you will? If you need prayer for anything, there's people down front that would love to pray with you. Also, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you want to take communion today, there's communion elements down front on both sides that you are more than welcome to partake of. All right, let's pray the benediction and we will charge on out of here. See what I did there? See what I did there? Dad jokes all day. Heavenly Father, right now, we just ask that the words of our mouth, the meditations of our heart, Lord, they'll be acceptable in your sight. You're our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, y'all. Love you.